This video covers the IGCSE Biology Objective 6.1.1 on the 2025 CAIE syllabus to describe an overview of the process of photosynthesis. So first of all, let's take a look at some examples of organisms that actually do photosynthesis. So we have things like different protists, usually protists that are one cell in size. We have things like cyanobacteria, pictured here. We have things like algae, and then of course plants being the main organism that we know to photosynthesize. But these are just some other types of organisms from other kingdoms that also do photosynthesis. So let's just take a look at the relationship that exists between photosynthesis and respiration. Now we have not yet studied respiration, but we just need to know a little something about how these two major chemical reactions work together. And we'll learn a lot more detail about respiration a little bit later in the syllabus, but I'm sure you are aware of something to do with respiration at this point. So in this diagram, we are looking at two types of organelles that exist in cells. We have the chloroplast, which exist in the types of cells that we just looked at in the previous slide, and we have mitochondria that exist in all types of cells in order to do cell respiration. So in the chloroplast, we have photosynthesis happening, and in the mitochondria, we have respiration happening. So photosynthetic organisms, such as the ones we've previously seen, are going to synthesize car carbohydrates. That is chemical energy, and they're going to use raw materials of carbon dioxide and water by using light energy from the sun in order to create chemical energy and release oxygen. And so in the diagram, the chemical energy is called organic compounds. We know, or hopefully we know, that that is glucose. So the plants can either use the chemical energy or they can store it for later. Of course, this chemical energy can be passed on through food chains and can be used in respiration or also can be stored for later. So as we go through the syllabus, we'll see examples of all of these different things. And then, as I just said, animals will consume the chemical energy and then they will release the energy through respiration into what is called ATP. That is the energy molecule in animals and then that energy will be used for a variety of different functions such as moving or excreting or respiration or other cell activities like active transport, for example. And as a result of using the organic compound and oxygen through respiration, carbon dioxide and water will be released. And then that is used by uh, photosynthetic organisms and the cycle just continues. So we can see how photosynthesis and respiration create this ongoing cycle of interdependence through photosynthesis in photosynthetic organisms, which rely on animals to provide the carbon dioxide and water through cell respiration. And it will just continuously flow in this cycle. 